and I'm gonna spotlight you. Okay. There you go. Oh, there I am. Bright. There you are. Oh, that's always a shocker. Okay. So like Karen said, hey, you just reminded me, May 2nd is my 16th anniversary. Is that right? I think how many years? Yeah. Anyway, that just reminded me. So I have been around with the, the business for a little while. I don't remember when we met Karen. It's been so long. But so there was a few things um, I want to talk to you guys. One, working your business smarter, not harder. Okay. A lot of times, a lot of us think we're working or we're working so hard, but we're not always working smart. Okay. So I wanted to give you guys some tips. If you know me, I'm a numbers person. I like to do it in numbers. So I'm going to give you five tips. But first, I wanted to kind of use a story. Have you guys ever gone to the grocery store to go shopping and you didn't bring a list or you didn't make a list? Right? Who's done that? Okay. Is it more time consuming? Do you go up and down the aisles like, huh, do I need this? What, what, what do I need? What do I need? You're going up and down the aisles. You're spending more time not remembering. Then you get home and what happens? You're like, dang it, I needed this too. And oh crap, I needed to get that too. I'm kind of going to relate that to our business because too many times we are doing that. We are not writing down. We are not focusing. We are not making our lists, our systems, our goals with our business. And we are spinning our wheels. We are taking more time. We don't get everything accomplished. We don't get everything that we need done because we are not working smarter, not harder. So that's what I kind of relate it to because we've all done that, right? I do it and I get to the store and I'm like, oh, I don't know what I need. I know I needed lots of things and it just makes me frazzled. And I think too many times we do that. So I wanted to talk five tips. Yes, I'm a, I'm a numbers person, sorry. Um, that is my strength, I guess. I don't know, I'm a numbers person. But when you're building a, success, a successful um, Sensi business, don't get overwhelmed and stressful, okay? Regardless of whether you work a few hours a day, several hours a day, only a few days a week, work your business how you want to work and what works with you. The number one, so here's your one. One first thing you have to do to work smarter, not harder, is set goals, okay? And I know you guys have probably heard about goals. You're like, Ugh, you know, okay, here's my goal. I want to be director or something. Great. If that is your goal, or I want to hit lead, or maybe I want to pay for dance. What is your goal or your why? With Sensi, we like to call it your why. Why did you join? Okay. If you don't have this written down in front of you somewhere, you see it often, then please do that. Because your why, your goals, whatever you want to call it, is what is going to keep you motivated and going. So make sure to do that. I don't care if it's on a sticky note. I don't care if you make a big dream board, whatever you choose, whatever works for you, make sure to set a goal. Now, when you are setting a goal, that goal or that why should be somewhere you can see it. Is it for your kids? Is it for this? But then I want you to also break it down. You guys have all heard SMART goals, right? The, what is it? Specific, measurable, um, attainable, relevant and timely, okay? You've got to make the goals, break them up. They have to be SMART goals. So I want to hit director. That's kind of out there, right? That's throwing it in the universe and hoping it comes back and hits you, right? You need to set that. How are you going to do that? Where are you at right now? Um, maybe you want to go on a vacation. Maybe that's your goal. Earn enough money for a vacation. Set up how you're going to get that. Okay. So if you want to be on director, um, how are you going to get, it? you got to do what I would say is four parties a month, get two recruits a month. How are you going to do that? You are going to ask 10 people every or five people every week. I know last week we talked about recruiting, watch that on that setting parties, make sure to do that. You've got to set those specific to reach for that goal. Because again, if you're going to the store and you don't have, you don't know what you're going for, it's not going to be helpful. 
Same with working your business. What is your goals? And put it in front of you because that is what is going to motivate you. Break down those activities and work for those. Okay, so that's number one. Um, know your goals and break them down into sets, um, steps. Two, work your business like a business. <laughs> have you seen people who have Scentsy businesses and they don't work it as a business? Right? They're just kind of, sorry, I got to change something. Hold on. Okay. Can you guys see? I put in fake eyebrow, eyebrows on my Zoom. And every time I moved, they were moving and it was distracting me. <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. That was driving me crazy. Two, work your business like a business. Okay, you guys are your own boss. Okay, not your upline. Okay, too many people blame their success on their upline doesn't help me. My upline doesn't do this. My upline didn't do this. That's okay. You are your own boss. We are all independent consultants. We don't have a boss telling us you need to check in at this time. You need to do this at this time. You need to do this at this time. You are your boss. You set when you work, how you work. Okay. I always kind of say this is a kind of double, you know, it's a great thing and it's a bad thing because too many times when you're your own boss, you're like, eh, I'm not going to work today. I can do it when I want. Okay. Treat it like a business. Be consistent. Go to work. You set your hours. You set the time you want to work, but make sure you are working your business consistent. If you stop working your business for a summer, for a few weeks, for a month, guess what? Your customers will go to someone else. I had a hair salon lady that I used to go through, go to all the time. She decided she was going to take the summers off. Guess what? She was great, but I found someone else because I needed my hair cut during that time. And sorry, it's a business. I have to do that. Same with your business. If you want to work, make the good money, you need to work it as a business. Now, some of you may be hobbyists and that is okay too. If you're just someone who buys it when you want to, buys it for your family and friends here and there, you are not working as a business, that's fine if that's what you want, but you're not gonna make the big bucks that way. Okay, so work it as your business like a business. You are the only one that holds the keys to your hours. Um, three, focus on income producing activities. Once you have a schedule place, you know, you got your business, you got it. Focus on those income at working activities. What are income producing activities? Um, parties, recruits, working, reaching, working with your team, reaching out to new customers, setting up basket parties, all of these things. Organizing an office may help you get organized. Making systems that we're gonna talk about, these are great things to keep you organized, which are good to do, but don't focus too much time on it. 80% of the time you put into your hours, your time that you set up should be on income producing activities. That extra 20% self-management, organization, all of that kind of stuff, should only be 20% of your business. If you are doing too much of the income, I honestly had a consultant that she was organizing and setting up her office and redoing things and redoing that, that she didn't sell the product. She liked to reorganize it over and over and over and she wasn't selling it. Guess what? Organizing your office is not gonna make you money. It may help you get organized. Again, keep that minimal. Um, Fourth, systems, okay? And this is one that I'm gonna talk a little bit more about. And I just noticed my computer, sorry, I'm on my laptop, it's gonna charge. It's gonna die on me. Um, systems equal success and less stress, okay? 
totally, totally true. Your systems are what you write in your shopping list. So you can check off, got, got, got it, got it. Oh, still need this one. Your systems is what's gonna keep you going and doing those income producing activities. Making the system is not income producing activities, but those things on your list, your systems will be. A system is a step-by-step -step procedure, something, a completing of a task. I'm not gonna tell you which system to use because every one of us are different. My personality, Karen's personality are totally different. We use different systems. That's just how it is. Every one of you is gonna work a different system. Everyone, even if you have the same personality, you may not have the same time frame that you are willing to work. So you need to find one that works for you. So how are you gonna do that? First, start by writing down activities that you are doing now, that you wanna keep. Write down what those activities are. What are you doing? Are you calling people? Are you setting up parties? Are you reaching out to your team? Are you talking to five people on recruiting? Those are just some examples. Write those down, okay? Also write down the things that you should be doing that you are not doing. Are you reaching out to those people? Write that in. Write down all the things that you need to work on. Also, one more thing to write down on this list, things that you are wasting time on. Okay, for example, one thing I waste time on is Facebook. Facebook has some great things, but how many times do we go on to Facebook and we want to go check this group or this group and this group, and then we get sidetracked on reading posts or reading comments or whatnot. If that's an issue, if that's a problem, if that's something you're wasting time, then go in and limit how much time you're going to do on that Facebook. Um, and then we're going to, I want you to go through and figure out how to automate or delegate some of those things to make it more simple. Okay, some things that I've used to delegate is um, automated emails, automated texts like project broadcasts, um, things that post for me like Visly. If you, have you guys used Visly or Project Broadcast or there's plenty of newsletter automated emails? Those things help help you, okay? I have new recruits. I have those all set up so I don't have to go in and do that. Um, I have them for my customer go in and it's all set up. Yeah, there you go. Tanya loves Visly. When I do launch parties, Facebook parties, I have Visly. When I do motivational posts on my team. I set them up on Motivational Mondays. I set them up in Visly. Things like that, automated things will also help. Now I'm going to just show a few systems that I have either used or do use that work. Again, find what works best for you. First, write up what's on your list and make a system that works for you. What do you need to do? Okay, this is my things to do list. This is honestly one of my favorite that I keep and I go back to it often. I put in Mondays what I want to work on, Tuesdays, Thursdays. And then I also have it broken down by week. Okay, what I'm going to do. This is what helps keep me organized. That's one thing where you can write your lists. Okay, there's different ones in here. That one I don't use as much. I don't know. I didn't make these. Again, um, don't try to recreate things. Use some that are out there is fine too. Um, this is the go for the nose, the monthly, your goals, what you're going to work on setting that up. If this works for you, great. And if we want any, I think Karen probably has a lot of these. And if you don't, I can give them to her share. This is the weekly task tracker. And someone has put a bunch of ideas in here of things they're working on and you can check them off. Okay, these are all great. Here's, um, that one goes with it. This is the monthly goal sheet. Um, my, sis, my Sensi system business year in a glance. Uh, the five by five, you guys heard this one. This is where one day, each day you work on these five things, contact, new lead, post on social media, post or join conversation, daily follow-up and 10 minute personal 
Hey, um, Sarah, I do have. I don't have all of them, but for the sake okay. of um, the fact that they're on my computer and not my laptop and my computer won't be hooked back up for a few days, anything that you have easy at your fingertips that you can message me, I will, yeah. I will share and that'll be a lot faster. Okay. Sounds good. Um, daily power hour. This is actually printed on Sensi system. Mm -hmm. Okay. For those of you that haven't, you know, find one of these, let's see, these are new consultant. These are some things that I have um, someone else made for new consultants. This is my new consultant. Again, these are just systems to help me get organized, help me have that list so I can work smarter and not harder. If you are just trying to pull out every day, oh, what should I do today? Oh, I should do this, you should do this. And then you get to bed and you're like, oh, I forgot to do that. Same thing, it, it's, it's like when you're shopping at the store, you have to have list systems to kind of get your business working and find what works for you. I have done all of these. That's why I have them in here. There's probably more out there, I know there is. Um, these are some that I have tried and I've liked or I've moved on. The power hour, if you are limited on time, if you work another job, if you are super, super busy with whatever, is in your schedule. Power hour is a great one where you focus one hour and it breaks down four, four things. Follow up, network, check in, and share the opportunity. Do 15 minutes each one, okay? And just do one hour a day. Setting these systems is what is going to help you focus, okay? So that was um, systems. You can also implement some of those things. Um, I can, sorry, I'm not even looking at questions. Yes, I can find spreadsheets, all these spreads, how can we find them? I know Karen has them and I have them. I will send which ones Karen doesn't and share them with you. So you can have these if you don't wanna recreate the wheel. Again, if you want to, I told you it's good to write down what you need to work on. Where is that one? Um, sorry, or you write in, they're in here, I have too many. You can just write in what you want to work in in a simple system and do it as a checklist. You can do it as a daily, a weekly, what works for you, or you can do it just as a what I want to do on Mondays. I know some people that do Monday as a parties day, Tuesday is training Tuesday, Wednesday is talk to 10 people about the opportunity recruiting and getting customers, Thursday's, you know, team day. Friday is follow-up date. So it kind of, find what works for you. I'm not going to be the one that says this is the perfect system because everyone wants a different system. Every system, you need to pick what works for you, okay? Um, fifth thing to work on is develop a positive mindset of success. Stop procrastinating and finding excuses. This is where Karen says I'm this nice person. <laughs> she thinks I'm so nice. But I, I struggle with excuses. Okay. I don't know if a lot of you know me. I have a lot of health issues, not just little health issues. These have been big health issues that there was years I could not get out of bed. There's months, days, whatever. It went on for years where I struggled to sit up in a wheelchair. My back swelled up every time I sat up. I had major -ish health issues. I could have quit, you know? I could have, but I don't let excuses stop me. I don't let the ability that I couldn't walk or sit stop me from growing my business. So yeah, when someone, I actually literally had a director a few years say, you know what, I'm going to have to quit. I sprained my ankle and I'm going to have to have surgery. I don't think it was sprain. I think she broke. I, I'm going to have to have surgery on my ankle and I don't think I can work the business. I seriously am like, what the crap? You can't work with just an ankle? <laughs> and I know it's her life. It's something else could have been going on, but that was her excuse. Stop finding excuses. Okay. If you want to work this business and make the good money and move up, don't procrastinate. 
don't find excuses. We all have excuses. I don't know anyone, any SSD will say any leader, any director, that's life is easy and smooth. So many of them have major, major issues going on in their life. They have children with severe disabilities. They may have a severe disability. They may have health issues, mental issues, fears, whatever it is. We all have things, okay? Being positive, overcoming your fears is what's gonna make you successful. Too many people fell in the business of Sensi because they give up or let their fears stop them from making it a business. I can't stress that enough. Have you all had people sign up under you who quit, right? Over something going on. Now I'm not saying they can't quit, but that is what's gonna make them successful is overcoming them. And if you don't have any issues going on in your life, great power to you you know, hold on because something could happen, okay? Get your business organized, set up, that if something happens, you know, you can keep working your business. You can keep doing those check marks. And you know what? Checking off things will help you feel accomplished. And even when you're stressed, got a lot going on, struggling, depressed, frustrated, Checking those things off, getting working, keeping your business running will be a positive in your life, okay? Overcoming those things is going to make your business even stronger, okay? That is what's going to make you stick out and you be successful with your Sensi business. Remember that we all have the same chances of success as anyone in this business. That is the one great thing about Sensi. Guess what? Someone who starts today versus me who started 16 years ago, Karen versus me, we all have the exact same opportunities to grow our business. You can all be superstar directors if you want to be. It is totally up to you. Not up to Karen, not up to your upline, not up to me. It is up to you. You have to be in control. You have to work smarter, not harder. Your ability, ability, excuse me, to succeed lies within your own mind. And depending on how you choose to think about these things and spend your time is up to you. Things will happen, like I said, whether it's even something small and frustrating with Sensi, you know, something selling out, the LTO selling out. I give up, I quit. You can quit, but guess what? You will miss out on the big picture and the huge opportunity. So those are my five tips on working smarter, not harder. So, awesome. okay, now I, sh I will go back and read questions. Sorry, Karen, did you look at the questions? Or? Yeah, I was looking at the questions, but I, I have a few comments too. Okay. Um, first of all, I think you hit the nail on the head with the goals and the fact that they have to be smart goals. I was, um, another leader posted the other day, basically you have 30 seconds, tell me your goal. And, and I read the, all the goals that people posted and they were things like, I want to get healthier. I want to sell more. I want to be better at self-care. I want to, I wrote some of them down while you were talking. I want to take my family on vacation. Um, I want to promote with Incensi. And there were a few that were smart goals, but 99% on the list were not measurable, actionable, um, timely, like you want to get healthier. What does that mean? Like, I want to walk a mile a day, five times a week, whatever. I want to sell more. How much more do you want to sell and by when, you know? So I think a good part of the reason people don't accomplish these goals is that they're, they're, they're not smart goals. You're not going to, you know, yeah, I want to sell more. So maybe that means you sell 200 this month and you sold 190 last month. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think that's that's something that always gets to me. Another thing that I wrote down when you were talking was um, taking time off in the summer. And I remember years and years and years and years ago, Orville talking about the impact of what you do now in your business and what happens to it 90 days from now, you know? 
And, and he was talking specifically about not shutting off your business for months at a time or taking the summer up and the importance of consistency. And that has always stuck with me. I mean, if, if you take June, July, and August off, so we'll say, then you are really hurting yourself come fall because all of that momentum has stopped. It's kind of like the, the little uh, merry-go-round at the play, the thing that you run around at the playground and then you, you keep running around it in circles and then you jump on when then you can ride it a little bit because it'll keep going. But when you, when you don't, um, it all halts. And like you said, you found someone else for your hair. I mean, you didn't stop getting your hair cut, right? Like people don't stop buying Scentsy. They just find another consultant. Just because you stop being there for them doesn't mean they're going to give up on Scentsy. No, they're just giving up on you. Um, so, and then I thought the other thing that was super, super valuable when you were talking about, um, well, a, a couple of things, um, focusing on the, the IPAs, the income producing activities. And I think it's really helpful to take, when you were saying make a list, right? Make a list of how you spend your time. You have to be honest with yourself when you make that list, because sometimes people don't really put on that list, the things that they're doing or how they're spending their time. And, um, you're only hurting yourself if you can't take an honest look at your business. Um, there are days where I spend way too much time on Facebook, you know? And so one thing that you can do, um, and it kind of goes with the Eat Your Frog, um, the, the Brian Tracy book that I love, you know, you can tell yourself, I won't get on Facebook and check my messages until I have accomplished this and this, or whatever it takes to, to you know, set some limits like that. Um, and then when you talked about writing out your systems, like writing down what you do and, um, creating systems, the other takeaway that I had kind of on that was there are things other people in your life can help you with. Like, I know you have, you have paid help at various times I've had paid help. Um, but we also have families, we have friends, we have other people. You could swap Sensi with a neighbor, perhaps even, if you will take the time to write step-by-step step down those systems, then anyone can help you with them. Like most of what we do is not rocket science and you really should spend your time on only the things that you can do. And so I remember Steve said to me years ago when I was really frustrated at one point and ready to quit, um, he said, if you would just sit down and explain this to me once, I can make a system and then anyone in this house can do it. It is not rocket science putting together a pouch party or a basket party. And if we have the step-by-steps and we don't even have to ask you how to do it, we can literally look at and we can do it for you, you know? So I, I think people just don't take the time to do that. And my answer was, why would I, you know, it takes longer for me to tell, tell you how to do something than to do it myself. And he said, but if you will do that one time, then we can repetitively do the action for you. Um, and I thought that was super, super powerful and a good kick in the face that I needed because he was right, you know? Um, so those were some of my takeaways from what you said, which I thought were, that was like, I needed some of this tonight too. So thank you. Well, good. Um, anyone have questions? I guess I can look too. So I, I, um, there's a lot of thank you. Um, let's see. There's also a lot of, um, you know, where can I get these references? I think, and the power hour is on the workstation. So if you just search the word, type in the word power hour, that two page PDF comes up and I know Sarah will share with us anything, but I do want to make sure you all remember what she said. Her systems aren't your systems. So anything she shares, make sure that you look at it as just a starting point and you are, you don't think, oh, to become a, a top superstar director, I have to do all of these things right? You take it and you do the things on there that work for you, whether they are ap applicable in your business. Um, okay. So Billy asked, what is my favorite? My favorite right now, honestly, it varies. So the two I like is my list of things to do, what I do each day and what I do by week. That is my favorite because I break up the week by what's going on, if that makes sense. At the beginning of the, the first week, I will add in on my Tuesday, um, mail out 
um, those that are going to purge, mail out this, mail out that. Second week, I work on my team newsletter, third week, and then I always put those in my Tuesdays. Mondays, I, I just have set things that I like to do. I mean, there's a lot. I reach out to my team, do the terrific Tuesdays. Um, Mondays, I do reminders. I do my welcome packets. I make them up. I do my thank you online orders. I like it that way. That is just how my brain works. So I know on Mondays, this is what I'm doing. On Tuesdays, this is what I'm doing, plus whatever is in that weekly. Does that make sense? I know it's kind of weird. That's how my brain works. Doesn't it? Um, don't you feel like it makes you more accountable too? Because you can sit down and you have in front of you exactly what you need to accomplish. So you don't even have to spend the time thinking about what you should do for the day. It's right there. Yeah. And how do you build in family time? I, I set it certain hours and I work it when I can. Um, a nice thing with this, I, I, a lot of people, okay, this is back to what works for you, set certain times, certain hours. And there are times in my life I have done that. Right now, I kind of work what I need on that day when it works for me. Some days I have to go run my kids here or I have to go do this. So then I'll work it. I don't work at set times. I work it in when it fits best for my schedule. Um, if you have young kids, when I had, when my kids were younger, now they're in school. So honestly, my days are when they're gone or when I get more done. But when they were younger and at home, I set certain hours and I loved the power hour when I had young kids. And guess what? There were times that I broke the power hour, not in just one consecutive hour. I did it in 15 incre minute increments. Okay. In the morning, I'm going to work on follow up another 15 minutes here another 15 minutes here it kept me organized and focused on one thing at one time so depending on your schedule for those that work maybe the power hour would be better for you and it doesn't have to be just one hour you're like maybe i don't have a full hour okay instead of 15 minutes of each do five minutes and do 20 minutes a day but that's keeping you consistent and maybe Saturdays, or if you have Fridays off, do um, two hours to, you know, what works for you is what you need to find out for. I can tell you, you know, everyone's different systems, but finding what works for you, writing up that list, I'm serious, is really going to help you put where you need to put things and schedule set times or schedule set things for the day that you can work on. Can I, can I touch on that too, Billy? Yeah. As a, as a leader, I want you also to think about the example that you're setting for your downline. If you are working, you know, until super late at night, or if you are sacrificing all that time with your hubby, like you are setting the example to your downline that that's what it takes to be successful. And you would not want them to sacrifice their, their life, right? You would, you don't want their priorities to shift off balance from where they should be. So, um, just be consider, consider that too. There are very few emergencies in our business. Um, most things can and will wait. Yeah, I have a director. There's never a wax emergency. Yeah. There really isn't. If a kid ate it or something, you call the emergency room, not you. <laughs> There's never a wax emergency. So, yep. Um, and don't let people walk all over you and, you know, have your set times. And it's a good way, like Karen said, to teach your team the same thing. Um, okay, there's someone else who likes power hour and they have a five-year-old twins, yes. So when I had little kids, I loved the power hour for that. So, um, any other, let's see, never a wax emergency. Yeah, I mean, really, can you think of a wax emergency? No. And when Sarah uh, talks about her health and without kind of going too deep into it, but I don't think you can understand the magnitude of how debilitating Sarah's health issues are. And if she can keep working her business and accomplish it, um, there, there honestly is no excuse why anyone else can't like there's not. And, and that's something I struggle with as well as excuses and everyone wants something different out of the business and that's fine. But when you tell me the fact that you, you know, like sprained your pinky, 
And, you know, that's going to be debilitating for the next six weeks. And you're not going to be able to set that. It's really too bad because you can't reach that goal. Um, and I'm working from a, a hospital room and my kids just come out of brain surgery or Sarah can't get out of bed. Like, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it, it's, if you want to have an excuse, then use whatever your circumstances as your excuse, but it doesn't have to be excuse if you don't want it to be. Right. Yeah. And honestly, working through your excuses will make you stronger. If that makes any sense, I hope that does. Um, working through my health issues. So, um, I mean, I could talk about my Sensi story. You probably heard it. I feel like Sensi used to al always ask me to tell my story. I had a talk last SFR. I know Karen's heard it probably a billion times. But, you know, when I, I don't know, how much time do we go? You're um, fine. At first, when I was working the business, I was doing parties, I was doing shows and events. That's where I like to be. I like to work my business. And my first obstacle in life was I was put on bed rest, um, flat bed rest. I was actually at an event and I started, ble I was pregnant. I started bleeding. I had a partial placenta abruption and they told me I was losing my child went to the doctor and they said, oh, well, you haven't lost a child yet. You need to go on bed rest. I was on bed rest from June to December when I had her and she still was a little early, a long time. I mean, I was still really young um, in the pregnancy. And I remember I talked to Orville, this was many years ago. How am I gonna work my business? I am flat in bed. How am I gonna work my business? And he told me if you need, you know, you can put your business on hold and whatnot. And I'm like, I'm flat in bed. Why not still work my business? And that is when I started doing more online. I started reaching out and doing um, catalog parties. I, I, I would have my husband mail them out or I would do online parties. And this was, oh my goodness, 14 years ago. We did not have Facebook, social media, what kind of things. We had Yahoo groups. Yes, if any of you are old, you may know what Yahoo groups are. That is where I started doing parties and getting team members and growing my business while on bed rest. That is when I really started switching my business. After I had my child, I'm like, woohoo, I'm off bed rest. I'm going to go back to parties and doing events again. That was my way of working my business. Then I was struck with several diseases, autoimmune and other diseases that literally knocked me flat back into bed. And I was frustrated. I was depressed. I was in so much pain. I, I could have given up, but I used my business to overcome what I was going through. It didn't take away the pain, but it helped me through the pain. It helped me continue to have something to live for, to work for, to keep going. My children, my faith, that too were a huge blessing, but Sensi truly helped me get through some of these hard times. Yes, I can't do everything I used to do. I you know, physically I can't. If you see me at SFR's world tours, I'm a lot better than I used to be, but I'm still in my wheelchair or scooter. So if you see a little girl going around in the scooter in the last six, or 14 years, 13 years, whatever, 12 years, that's me. But you know what? I don't let it stop me. I go on trips, I earn every incentive, and I am gonna make every incentive. That is my goal. I write up and right, there goes back to systems. I write up, there's your goals, right? I write up how I'm gonna do it, what I'm gonna do each month, and I set to work those things. I have not missed one incentive trip. Being in a wheelchair, not being able to do parties, whatnot, I don't let it stop me. So yeah, excuses, we all have them, right? Whether it's kids, family, health, whatever it is, don't let them stop you. Let your excuses help you grow to be a better consultant. Overcoming those excuses is what will make you a better consultant. So I don't know, that's in a nutshell. <laughs> yep, awesome. Um, if there aren't any other questions then we'll let you guys get back to your Tuesday evening. Um, we have work at Wednesday tomorrow 
And if you're doing book club, we have part three. Um, I think Steve packed my book and the study guide. So Hannah doesn't realize it, but that may be a little heavier on her tomorrow night, um, but we'll, we'll make it through for sure. So thank you, Sarah, for sharing. It's always wonderful hearing, hearing you. Um, Thanks, guys. And have a good night, everybody. See ya.